Hey there guys, Shane here from Figure 3D Printing. Today we're going to give the GTEC Persa i3 movement a big upgrade and put the GT2560 board in it. Welcome back guys. So as I said today, we're going to do another upgrade here to my GTEC Persa i3 Lunum. This was my very first printer. I've had this printer for uh, it will be nearly two years here in just a few months, and I've done quite a lot of upgrades. As you see, all the printed parts on it, modifications to it. It's mounted to this plywood with some brackets there to hold it in. And I had my Sanguine Luno Luo Luo board had burnt out on it, and there was a short on it somehow. And the connector where the 12 volt comes in had arced and totally melted that, and it was just a hazard after that point. And also, you can't have a part cooling fan with that board unless you do some serious modifications with a MOSFET. And I went through all of that months ago. It ended up not working because I ended up shorting out the little um, adapter that takes the uh, 2004 board to the Sangua Uno, uh, same as the ramps, I guess, same little adapter that it uses to fit on that board. You're modifying pins, running jumpers. It just was a nightmare. It worked for a little bit and then it stopped. So I decided to upgrade to this. Now this is sent to me by Banggood so that I could try this out in my printer. So let's take a closer look at it and see what it looks like and some of the differences in some of the other boards. Okay, so here we have the GT2560 board and it's a pretty interesting little board. They, this one's made by GTEC. There's a few other makers to it, but GTEC's the main one to it. And they say this is like the best thing between like a ramps and an Ultimaker board. Like it's the both of them combined. So for drivers real quick, and you have your you know five driver slots here. I have these two as A4988 stock drivers. So this is the, the extruder zero and extruder one, extruder zero. This is the Z. Then I have some TMC2208 drivers right here for the X and Y, which really will quiet it down. I mean, it makes this printer almost inaudible, which is really, really awesome. Here you have your hookup for your Again, I'm using the 2004 display. And then you have these three pretty decent sized MOSFETs with these heat sinks already on them. A lot of boards that come out now don't have heat sinks on the MOSFETs and they will end up overheating and you'll see a lot of issues with that. These MOSFETs right here are for the bed and the two extruder hookups that are all right here on the side. We have our USB, our power, and then here we have two very small fuses. These are really hard to actually zoom in and see. They are a 15 amp and a 10 amp. The 15 amp is for the bed. The 10 amp is actually for the uh, extruder, for the heater on that. My first board, these were actually bad. So I ended up returning that one and getting another one in. And then I actually bought others, which actually made this board work. So that worked out well for me because I was actually able to fix this board. Uh, and just as you can see underneath this one driver, there are the three jumpers right here and this is how you change your steps. And there's actually some settings right here that tells you how to actually run in the different micro stepping. Uh, it, there's a little chart right here how to do that. Now over here are all the hookups for your thermistors, all your different fans. This is your part cooling fan and then all of your dry, all of your steppers are going to hook up right into here and then here you're going to have some other thermistors. So these are limit switches. These are thermistors up here. Now the nice thing I really like about this board, everything is labeled very well. So right here you can see some of the fans are labeled here but when you flip this over all of the hookups are labeled so that you know well the fans are labeled up top but here you have your extruder, the second extruder, Z, Y, X, all your Z min, Z max, min and max for all of the different boards. Right here, it tells you for the temperature, the thermistor for the heated bed, uh, extruder one, extruder two, USB, your DC in, you can see there. And then you have your hot bed, heater two, and heater one. So again, this can do a dual extrusion system if you really wanted to do that. And these boards are very affordable. These are about 35 to $50, depending on the deal that you can find. I find that to be very affordable but again, in comparison to like a ramps board, which is like $8 plus the Arduino uh, 2560 Mega, which is another $15 roughly, you know, so to speak. So you're looking about $20 for that. This is a little bit more, but it's one board all in one, nice and flat. I think it's a pretty cool thing. I really wanted to try one. So in order to get this on the printer, we either need to modify it or mount it jankily. I don't want to do that. So let's look at what I have. So I said, if I mount this onto the printer, it's going to hang over 
like so. As you can see, they're white here. There's about almost two inches of board exposed. Now granted, nothing is back there the way that I have my extruder set up. There's no cables going back there. All the cables come right here across the front. No big deal. But I wanted to actually house this, so thank goodness for Thingiverse, there's a case out there for it. And actually, I need to actually see if this one even fits because I haven't tried this one yet. Yeah, this one does fit, okay. So this is a GT2560 case. This is probably the only one that I've seen on Thingiverse and the guy who created it actually even noted that, that there's hardly any out there. And it's the same for the Sangue Uno. There's a few things out there for it, but really not that many. This board, like nothing. No one has anything for it. It's a very, very cool design. Your board fits right in here. You have some cable management slots and you have some inbound and outbound uh, slots right here. And then for some of your other hookups down at the bottom for your heater and stuff like that, there's some cutouts for that as well. It's a well ventilated uh, piece. And this comes in several different sizes because this is the Rev A plus. And the Rev A plus is 81 millimeters across. So he made this one big enough to fit the board in there just like so. And again, I really, really like the fit of that and the way it looks. But sadly, he did not add in any mounting spots here in order to mount this to the printer. Now, the holes that are already in the printer are threaded, so or tapped, however you want to say that. And I'm not going to use that because I'm actually going to mount this flat in the center of this upright right here. So I'm gonna actually drill two holes into that, match it up with this, drill two holes in here as well, and just use some nuts and bolts to hold that on there and secure it. And it's gonna be secured onto the frame like so. And as you can see, we have some inputs here, here, and here where all the different parts can actually hook into or the bed here, motors here, the extruder and everything will come right here out the top. And I had to make some changes to it because this is his stock board uh, or the stock cover that he made for it. It prints like absolute garbage. So there's these weird big screw head deals here. This is higher. It has this weird honeycomb because he took the honeycomb lid that he had for the other models, which, you know, fanless ones basically, and just made another solid layer on it and then called it a day. Uh, I find that sloppy personally. It's his model. It's his choice what he wants to do. I found that really, really sloppy and I didn't like that at all. So I went ahead and remixed it. I got rid of the weird largeness that's there and then I completely flattened the bottom. So it is now one solid piece. There's no extra printing, extra print. This took a lot of extra print time. I, le I lessened over an hour of print time just by removing that weird honeycomb that was still left in there. And this fits right on top and there is a gap you can kind of see that there to allow a little bit more airflow be pulled in. And what am I gonna use on this? Well, sadly this uses an 80 millimeter fan. Who in the world still has an 80 millimeter fan laying around? I do. Most of you probably don't, unless you have been computer modding for years, and I mean 10 years, you are not going to have an 80 millimeter fan laying around. This one's actually cool because this is actually an LED cooler fan that actually will say Fugitech 3D printing on it and it tells you the temperature. There's a little temp probe on here, which I thought is kind of nifty. I don't know if it's gonna fit. It's 25 millimeters thick. So once I attach it here, or if I put the board in first, I guess you guys might wanna see this. So put the board in there and if we're just gonna kinda hold this like so for now, just to see if it actually will fit. And yeah, no, this fan does not fit whatsoever inside of there. I would have to raise it up quite a bit. So we're going to end up just externally mounting it like so, which it won't matter because this is going to be away from the uh, printer space. So this is extending to the exterior side of the printer. It won't worry about anything and this is gonna pull air straight in and blow on all of those drivers. So again, it's not as ideal as I was hoping. Maybe I'll remix it so that you can pull this lid up more. So right now it's like this, and there's your spacing. Maybe I can remix it and bring it up like this and maybe give this lid some sides or whatever to it. I don't know, it's, it's something that I can do in the future. Again, it's just the lid. The case fits great, which was the longest part of the print. And you can see it fits in there like so and has a USB slot down here, and then this is where a power connectors are gonna come in, main power are coming down here. So I'm excited. 
I think this is going to work out well. Uh, so let's get to drilling and we'll start mounting. Okay, so I went ahead and drilled some holes here. So this is 42 millimeters and I figured that actually it was a little bit genius when he went to modeling. This spacing here allows for the spacing where the motor is and the 80 millimeter fan is literally like two millimeters away from the back of the X motor. So it actually works out rather well. I'm, I'm quite surprised about that. But that's okay, so I have this pre-drilled. I drilled into the, in the uh, actual frame first, held this up there, then pre-drilled that. So I'm just gonna use some, uh, I think these are like 12 millimeter M3s to secure this in with some nuts on here. And that will make this nice and secure. Then once we get this on there, then I can worry about putting the board in there and connecting everything up and I'll show you guys how to do all that. Okay, so it's mounted and I mounted the board. It's just four bolts. You guys can figure that out. It's certainly not that hard. So now that we're in here, what do we need to do first? So I'm gonna do the power first and I actually need to run this the opposite way through with the spade connectors, the forks going through the hole down here first because the connector is too big since mine, again, shorted out on the main 12 volt and actually shorted on the bed as well. I had to cut down a ATX six pin connector in order to make it work for this and we can plug this in like here and there. Now that is there and out of the way without a problem. Almost looks like it would fit through there better though. So I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to put all this in here. I just know basic what I'm gonna do. And it really, it's gonna be however you want to do it and whatever makes the most sense for you because you're the one making it, you know? your setup might be different than mine, and you might be doing this on a different printer. That's the other thing, because this, this board works on pretty much any 3D printer out there that you have, and you load Marlin up on it, and you should be good to go. Yeah, I think maybe that's what that cutout right there is for. I like that better. So see, that's nicer out of the way. One cable down, a buttload to go. So, I don't know. I want to show you guys this, but I really don't want to be boring and just show you all of it because if you know what you're doing, it's just going to be boring. You see the board, you know what it is. But let's do a couple more things here. The whole extruder bundle is going to go down in through this top and then out because I need to figure out how I need to run all those cables. So I'm going to time lapse you guys. So enjoy this time lapse while I figure out how I'm gonna do all these cables. Here we are with everything plugged in, and I had to, here's my screen, because the cables are too short. And this is already a replacement screen, and I'm actually using replacement cables, because the last cables I had messed up. So your stock cables on this printer should work, but I am gonna order some 10-pin uh, ribbon cable, and I'm just gonna remake these cables to make them longer. But I mean, everything in here fits pretty well, as you can see, I had to change a few things around. So the main power is right here. Well, sorry, this is the heated bed. Main power and the X all come through this hole. The Y and Z and a bunch of other end stops all come through this bottom hole down here. From the top up here, as you can see, here's where all the extruder stuff comes through. And I used one of the holes right there with a zip tie to just hold this still so that way it's not flopping over the place when the printer is printing. So, I mean, it took me probably an hour to do all of this. Sorry, my camera did die while I was doing that. So you didn't get the full time lapse. So I'm just gonna pull these cables, see, down here, like so, to keep them out of the way as much as I can. And the fan hooks up to this. I made a little pigtail here for it. So it could hook in like that, and then it'll just, kind of tuck in there in the side. And so we get this right here, as you can see, right down here, 
there is you know maybe two or three millimeters between the fan and the stepper motor so it does fit yay <laughs> it's very very close though so just keep that in mind when you're mounting this to you know know where you're mounting that to so i think these take m4 to attach it uh, so i'm going to go ahead and put those in and uh, again this will just be the temporary setup until i get the new maybe i'll remake this i don't know if i will probably not but uh, either way i'll just wait until i get the new ribbon cable to do that so now i'm just going to fire it up make sure it actually works all right i'm cleaned up i have no idea if this is going to work so the only way to find out is let's center everything up and see what happens. Turned on. Great airflow from this fan. The fan is, is literally, it's quiet, which is great. I mean, the power supply fan is still the loudest thing on this printer. But as I said, I put in those new drivers. So let's see what it sounds like when we home the printer in. A little janky down here, you know. Prepare, auto home. <laughs> so loud but man that X and Y is absolutely silent that is pretty boss now let's see if we can show you guys the fan here now the refresh rate is different on the camera than what the fan is actually so it says Fugatec 3DP I think something like that and it's saying it's 77 degrees in there right now, so it's pretty warm down here in my basement. This is a super old fan. I literally got this thing 10 years ago, and I've just had it ever since. So, and just to confirm here, I wanna make sure that, yeah, that, that can freely get over the other side of the X-axis. So yeah, so this has plenty, and this is secure, so we're not to worry about that falling out or going anywhere. Man, that is super duper quiet. Now, I will say I did try to do one more addition. I was gonna add a stepper damper here to the X and the Y. Now, since this fan is so doggone close to this, um, the motor here, when I added the stepper damper in there, it's too much. The stepper damper adds about four to five millimeters, roughly, and this motor is literally two millimeters, maybe three from the fan, so it just didn't work out. Yeah, so those drivers in there are gonna stay nice and cool with that fan. I am really liking this, just to confirm, I can move this all the way up and down uh, as it's floating Z-axis because of banding on this printer. But yeah, so that floats, and yeah, this is the loudest thing. Why can't someone make a decent 30 millimeter fan? All right, so I do have to say thank you to Banggood for sending me this board. I really needed it because this printer was out of commission. It totally burned up on me, and I'm happy they sent it to me along with a few other things I've done some videos on. So thank you to them. So the board was provided me free of charge. No money was exchanged. Again, this was from Banggood, not G-Tech directly. Uh, I tried ordering one myself, but it just didn't work. So I had to reach out to them, and they said they would send me one so I could make this video and make this printer work again. So again, big thanks out to them. And if you want to check out this board, I'll put some links down below to Banggood so you can pick up this product. It's an affiliate link. So if you feel like you want to support my channel, go ahead and pick one up with that. And I will say that this board is great for any of these printers, these super low budget printers that come with kind of a crappy board on them. This is a decent board. Uh, I've actually printed with it before. I've done a lot of testing with it to make sure that it actually worked before I did all of this. And it so far has just been absolutely great and I really can't complain about it at all. I thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this little project here, me doing more upgrades here to my GTAC printer, please hit that like button. If you didn't hit the dislike button, talk to the comments down below whether you liked the video or not. I'd love to hear from you and get your input on what I do here. If you guys wanna keep an eye on what I'm doing, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon, that way you get a notification anytime I upload new content. If you guys wanna help me pay for projects, down below is gonna be a Patreon link. Donate me a dollar more, I greatly appreciate it. Current Patreons. You guys are always awesome, and I thank you for your donations. And if you want to support me without directly donating to me, you can use some of the affiliate links down below. Again, there'll be one for Banggood for this product, and there'll be a bunch of other ones, Amazon, eBay, things like that. Update your bookmarks, do your daily shopping with those, and I greatly appreciate it. And I thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, happy printing.